Hello, hello, Caligula friends. Oh, oh, there we go. I was like, oh, my stuff, it popped up. It looked a bit weird. How's it going today? I'm here doing my best impression of a, uh, a professor with my uh, lovely cardigan, which looks a bit like both a cow pattern or fun um, like camo. I can't decide exactly. Oh, did I lose my audio for you guys? Oh no, there it is. Cool. Little chill background music. Just wanted to make sure that was playing. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, like I had mentioned today, new day, new Thursday, new stream, new teaching. Yay! Calligraphy stuff. Wahoo. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing pretty much like a, a semi sort of quick rundown on the stuff we've learned already. Uh, so all the letter groups, um, I'll move th through them kind of fast-ish. Like I, I definitely won't be going as slow as I do for uh, my streams because I don't want it to be 20 hours long. <laughs> like if I did every single one really slowly. But I'll move through them like semi-fast and then we're going to go on to uh, double letters. So like F, F and L, L and like... Um, figuring out a way that that can look nice together, um, exploring like a little bit of flourishing with that to make things look a little bit, you know, interesting. And then we're going to be going on to numbers. Um, just as a quick FYI, if you ever want to look at numbers that are like beautiful when it comes to calligraphy, uh, Suze Cunningham or at S-U-Z Cunningham, like C-U-N-N-I-N-G. H A M on Instagram. Her numbers are so nice to look at. They're so beautiful. They're literally so beautiful and amazing. But yeah, so she's like the queen of like addressing and all the numbers and stuff. So if anyone wants to look at that, like, please go look. Cause like, I'm okay at them. It's fine. But she's like going to be the one if you want to emulate someone, emulate ma'am, ma'am, Suze Cunningham. <laughs> Cause she's like the best. Um, yeah, so we'll start like we normally do, just doing a, like uh, quick warm ups. I did some calligraphy this morning. I, actually, this morning, I was doing some. I, I took some pictures of some engraving I did the other day. So hold on a second. I'm gonna switch to my other camera. I'm just gonna show off because I'm very proud of the work that I did. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty sweet. It looks pretty good, and the photos turned out very nice for someone who is me, not a photographer. So I was very proud of myself. So hold on one second. Doing my best, my best uh, college professor today. Uh, let me switch cameras to this guy. Look, look at it. Look at it. Enjoy this beautiful engraved wine bottle that I did the other day. Is this not great? Listen, I don't normally, I'm not one to like toot my own horn, but I am so happy with how this turned out. This looks so fly. Like, I'm the happy with this. Um,. So yeah, that's really cool. That's very fun. Very fun for me. Um, so yeah, th this is definitely one of those things that like once you, if you ever get bored <laughs> with doing just letters or just working on paper, engraving on like glass and metal and stuff, listen, so cool, so sick. Cause like this was super fun. Like look how cool that is. Then I put a little bit of gold in there so it like really pops. Cause if there's no gold, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a little show and tell because this is fun. I'm very proud of myself. Um, so yeah, if you don't you don't have to do color if you don't want to. Like this one, it's just uh, an old Delwini whiskey bottle, and this one just has. I didn't add any color. It's just like the the etched glass. But yeah, I freehand did this guy. I think there's, there is a video on my. Internet. Okay, I'm done showing off. Hope you didn't 
mind that little interlude. Because I, like I said, I was very proud of myself with how that turned out. <laughs> Alright, so we know the drill. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go kind of fast today with my drills. I just don't want my clay repeat to look like complete garbage today for you guys. Uh, yeah, those my knuckles cracking. It's fun, don't do that. That's how you know I'm serious. The glove, the glove, the glove. Yeah, so the, like I said, if you guys ever get bored doing like a regular old on paper, there's so many other mediums that you can kind of work on too. You want to go glass, you want to go metal, you want to go and like do some like chalkboard stuff. That is also very cool. Um, yeah, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Like once, once you understand like how things work and like kind of the rules and stuff, you can kind of kind of do it on whatever you want but definitely been on like an engraving kick these days in which like I'm like what do I have in my house that I can engrave what do I have can I use this perfect let's do that I think everyone who gets an engraver is kind of like that. You just kind of run around your house looking like, okay, like, do I have long glasses that I don't care about? Can I like personalize those things with my name? So my husband doesn't put his lips on it. How dare he? Like, I don't know. So yeah, I'm going V fast with the, my warm up. So we're, we're going to see how good my calligraphy is. I just want to go through, because going through 26 letters just as like an overview. I just don't want it to take like two hours to get to the point of the stream, but I do want to have like a record of like, um, like how they all are in one video versus in like four or five actually. Cause I'm gonna go through the basic strokes as well. But yeah, so um, actually talk a little bit about my day today. So I always like to give a little bit of a little bit of an update. So the the reason why I'm wearing my college professor chic today is because I went a, I did a little bit of shopping this morning, a little bit of light shopping, which was great because like the stores here have been for non-essential services have been shut for like I want to say almost three months now, two months, three months, long time. So, you know, you can order stuff online and stuff, but I just, it felt like nice to be able to do something that's like kind of normal, you know, which is just like, I'm going to go to the store today because I needed to go and get something um, uh, from Winners, something that I know that they carry that's like not I incredibly expensive, like if I would get it at the drugstore, in any case. And then while I was there, I was like, I'm just going to look around a little bit, do a little shopping, like everyone stays Everyone has to wear a mask anyways, and everyone stays like good, like six feet or whatever, two meters away from each other when shopping anyways, because they've um, separated the, uh, the aisles. So there's like more room. So I went there, I did a little shopping. I accidentally got myself a whole look, which was kind of fun. So I got this thing and I got this and I got like an, an, a pair of black jeans which are gonna be getting washed because I, I don't like wearing jeans like right out of the, like this is not so bad because I'm wearing a t-shirt and so it's not touching directly my skin like the whole the whole thing, but with jeans and stuff, I'm like, mm, I'd like to wash you. Like, and especially because the dyes and stuff in there. And I got a really nice pair of shoes because I have big feet. So like, it's so hard for me to find shoes because I'm tall, I'm 5'10". So, it's hard to find like cute, nice shoes for a girl who has big feet. I have big feet, so I don't tip over. This is what I always like to say. Um, but yeah, so I got that and I was like, oh, this is like a whole cute outfit. This is so nice. I did this by accident, <laughs> but 
But it was just, like, very nice, like, mentally to go to, like, a store and do, like, a normal thing instead of just, like, staying home and being like, I can't go outside. I can't go and do anything. I can't. Like, all for good reasons. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and, like, bitch about the couvre-feu that we've been having, but it was just nice to be able to do something that felt normal, you know? Cool. Now I'm a little bit warmed up. Is it the most warmed up I've ever been? No. Uh, are we gonna still try and do it anyways? Yes, that would be yes. So let me get my pad. Can we see it? Yes, we can, we're good. I decided to leave my, cause like sometimes I'll, I'll take my little desk pad off and sometimes I'll leave it on. I decided to leave it on today, so we'll see uh, if that works well. So we are going to start with basic strokes. I'm just going to grab a pen, pen holder, and I was using an EF principle the other day, and I, I like using that type of nib. Uh, there you are. This, by the way, is the little tiny baby screwdriver for my pen holder. <laughs> Get that. I have my ink. I have my dirty, inky water. And I have a paper towel that's here that I've already been using. I'm just going to it's gonna stir my ink a bit. It's Higgins Eternal. Normally it doesn't need much, but uh, sometimes if you leave it a little bit long, it w it just needs to be stirred like just just lightly, just so it like the pigment doesn't settle too much to the bottom. But usually it's pretty fine. literally just use the other end of a plastic pen holder to, to stir. So I'll put, move that out of the way. That should be good. And let me just, because I put my disgusting hands I say disgusting, not really disgusting, just my hands on the, the nib just to make sure that there's no oils on there. Should be good. Should, being the opportune word here. Sorry, desk just moved. Uh, all right, so let's zoom in a scooch. I don't think it needs to be super zoomed in today, but we're gonna zoom in a little bit. So we are going with the first, we're gonna do basic strokes. I'll just move my photo camera, move this up, move this over. So, uh, oh, and also, by the way, just so people are aware, I finally made an actual Discord. I had one before, but it I did hadn't done anything to it yet. So I actually like made the little rooms and did the whole thing. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm just not sure exactly what I want to do with it yet. I have an idea of kind of making it more of like community based stuff and projects. Like maybe uh, I can do some kind of like homework type of vibe. Like if someone wants me to like cor correct things that they've been doing uh, on their own, maybe if they like submit that there or something like that, and I can I can do that. I did upload like one file on there that's like free to download. It's my um, um, guidelines, like this one, but it's just not in landscape mode. It's in portrait mode, 
It's uh, the other one that I'll be using it in, in a little bit. Yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, I was I was talking to my husband this weekend and we were trying, well, I was figuring out like, okay, like, so I've been streaming now and so like I make some content online and like all that kind of thing. A, a lot of this comes because um, of COVID, right? Because I haven't been working in person um, and like a lot of like weddings and stuff have been pushed. So like, you know, like everyone else, okay, let's move things online. Let's figure this out. And I've, I'm, I'm, I've really kind of gotten on the uh, bandwagon of, I'm a big fan of like just sharing information and not necessarily having to put it behind a paywall all the time. Uh, do I think that that's a bad thing to put things behind a paywall? No. Um, but um, I think for me, especially because this type of information is out there very, like, I'm not, I'm not the only person who's ever thought of doing things online or streaming videos or anything like that. So it's not particularly proprietary, <laughs> like on my end. Um, so which is why I like kind of doing this type of thing. And I like trying to make it feel accessible, like that there are still rules, but that it's an accessible art that you can do. Um, you know, it just takes kind of practice and giving yourself the time to learn something new and and all that kind of thing. Like, you know, just learn the basic rules and you can kind of move on from there as long as you know the rules you're breaking and not just doing it by accident. But again, like I'm also not a master penman either, right, on my, on my end. But I also don't think that that should preclude me from sharing the information that hangs around and shakes around in my head all the time. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, like my, uh, my husband was like, he's like, so you essentially want to be like the Bob Ross of calligraphy. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, well, I honestly, that's like not a bad descriptor. I think it's kind of funny. Um, I just don't whisper when I talk, obviously I'm kind of, I, I, I kind of talk a little bit loud, but, um, yeah, like that kind of vibe of just like, you know, anyone can really do it. You just kind of have to take the time to, to sit down and practice, right? So I kind of like that whole, oh, that O was rough. Uh, let's try that one again. Nope. There we go. That's a bit better. That wasn't good. And that wasn't good. But yeah, like starting something that's kind of a... Bob Ross feel, I guess, of just like, you can do it. You can learn how to do it. Um, it is accessible. You, you don't need all the fan. Because the thing is, I think too, is sometimes people get bogged down with Instagram. And with Instagram, um, how do I put this? Like people want to show off their best, right? So they're going to show off their best, maybe most expensive tools or um, maybe like their best mediums of what they're using of like the most expensive gouache or the most expensive ink or whatever. But at the end of the day, you don't actually need most of those things to do calligraphy. Like you can t use a pencil and a paper that are a paper that's lined that you can line with yourself. Um, or like a marker if you don't want to do if you want to do something like that but you don't necessarily need all the the contraptions that go along with it if that if that makes sense so it de it's definitely one of those things that i, I kind of want to make sure that people understand um so yeah it's also kind of why i i'm like pretty passionate about like you know coming on and teaching because i've had people ask me like why are you doing this for free <laughs> hold on sorry i have my uh my little note papers And yeah, like, I don't know, for, for me, it, I, I think of it less like for free. I'm thinking about it more like I'm trying to put
push forward the thing and make it accessible, the thing that I really like doing, and I think other people like doing. Does that make sense, I guess, maybe? Or, and like, you know, and be here to give like resources for, for things that like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, like I've made very clear, I'm not a master penman by any means. I just really like doing this. This is what I do for like full time. And yeah, like, I think for anyone, this is, could be really fun. It's also kind of meditative, right? So yeah, anyways, all that to say, I have a Discord now that should hopefully be, I'm going to try my best to, to actually make it like a fun place to go. Um, I have some ideas already. I've, I've definitely been checking out other people who are um, like artists on, on Twitch to see, or just even off Twitch, you know, people who just have a Discord. Um, you know how they run it like what some of the categories are like how they interact with um the people who go into the discord and i think i think it could be a really fun like option for people you know and if i'm not there obviously like you know you need a, a fairly large eh, well not a fairly large there needs to be more than just me in there obviously um But like, you know, it doesn't take that many people to be in there to make it kind of fun. And, you know, people can, you know, make career friends online and like share what, what they're working on. And, you know, maybe if some people are farther along than others, it could be interesting. Because I used to um, be on our calligraphy a lot on Reddit. And... Like m more when I had just started. And at the beginning, like it was honestly, it was a very like fun and supportive group. Sometimes now I, I feel like it's like big karma. Like just, people just put po post things for the karma at this point. Like it's less about um, like how good is my work? How can I improve and more like upvote me slash like here's the thing I'm selling. Um, is is that all the time like that probably not but a sh maybe just my old person view so here we go we're group one all right now we'll go sorry i just i have because i i don't always remember all of them in a row so i have them just on a clipboard in front of me so i don't forget worst thing be like oh no i've forgotten a couple letters it's not uh, an alphabet of 26 an alphabet of 24 now <laughs> so so yeah like I said I have like lots of I have ideas and of what to do in there which could be fun
actually what I'm what I might do and I'll, I'll think about is I might um, scan this page and put it into my discord and just as just like a exemplar granted again like I'm doing it kind of faster than I would do it if I was doing this for like my handouts but um, I think it's kind of fun to, to see what it actually looks like when when someone's not like over practicing not over practicing that's not the right word how do I want to, how do I want to phrase that um, like looking for perfection when they're just looking for like this is this is good enough kind of thing because then you can see that like you know it's just because someone does something all the time doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect every single time that's why you practice you have to kind of learn to enjoy the process right There's my letter group and number two. Yeah, I think so. I think I'll make a, actually, hold on. Let me just write my G here for group. And I'm gonna write a little note for myself to scan this and put this on Discord. So if anyone wants this one as a reference. Uh, um, and yeah, I, I'll probably end up actually putting this video I've been putting my my twitch streams with me teaching I've been putting them on my YouTube channel as well so if you're watching this on YouTube I will link it in the description and if you're watching this on Twitch um, then I will then if you go to my about page my discord is there and I'll I'll link it in there oh hello patience I'm happy that you're coming for some practice I'm going through the letter groups and then we're going to go into some double letters and numbers today. Lovely to have you here. How has your day been? Are you working on a specific letter group today? Are you working on something fun? Are you just gonna, you know, do a little bit of practice? I'm also gonna be curious to see if group three fits all on one line. We'll see. Ooh, nice. Copper plate variations are fun. If you're in the UK, uh, have you ever learned from Rachel Yellop? Uh, what time is it? For? It is four o'clock, four p.m. for me. So for you, I think it's five hour difference, so it'd be nine p.m. ish, depending on where you are. Is that right? And the reason why, sorry, I asked, but Rachel Yellop because she does a delightful copper plate variation that's really, really fun. Ooh, nice. Oh, very cool. I took her, she, so I'm in Montreal. I'm, I'm in Canada. So, uh, she was, uh, she came to our guild and she taught uh, a few years ago. So it's been really, really fun. Uh, sorry. I just realized my chat box got, uh, moved around. Let me just fix that on my screen. I'm just gonna write the word test so I see where my, ah, there we go. There, that was where it was supposed to be. So 
Sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, no, Rachel's great. She's like so kind. She's so sweet. She does really fun variations though. Her ends are so delightful. <laughs> How have you been liking it? She came here, oh, I'm trying to think now, when did she come? I can look, I have her books. I have her, I have my, my notes next to my desk. Oh my God, yeah, the pull that and an art. It's so interesting, it's so cool, like how she decides. She was like, yeah, I just can't do that. And I was like, what? You don't have to listen to all the rules? Excuse me. I kinda, do I have a date on my, sorry, I'm just looking at my, like, you know, my old notes from her class. I don't know if I have the date on them, and I don't think so. But I feel, I feel, I feel like it was 2017. Because she did a, uh, a three-day workshop with us. Two days were on the uh, folded pen which was really fun to learn from her. And then uh, one day on her pointed pen variations. How has it been doing it online? Have, how have you been liking doing online lessons? I've taken like too many to count. It's a bit ridiculous. But um, the one, the one silver lining of the pandemic is so much online content. <laughs> so many people, so many calligraphers are doing um, workshops online, which has made me so happy. Uh, yeah, it's definitely out of control. I believe, yes, absolutely. It's crazy. I, uh, I looked at my, like, where my, my money has been going. No, 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 I get you. You're not the only one who's out of control, me too. I literally looked, like, from last year and this year. I'm like, I need to, my last class that I'm going to be taking this year, I think, at least for six months, because I just need time to, like, um, absorb all of the information is going to be in a, Starting in two weeks, it's um, the Madras with uh, opening stand with uh, Shin. And like then I'm going to have to be like, okay, like we need to stop now because I've taken too many. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of crazy. So I get you. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah no I I cut my I yes a hundred percent I cut myself off last year in like November and I was like no no more I'm done like that's it until 2021 and then 2021 rolled around and I literally signed up for like five and I was like cool <laughs> awesome I was like there's not I I mean I need time to practice the ones that I'm learning But I'm, I'm also like, there's in what other way or like time would I be able to learn from like six different international calligraphers at the same time? <laughs> hey, Marco. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. Madras with Shin Long. Yeah, opening stand on, in, on, um, on Instagram and YouTube. And I think most other things. Yes, amazing. Uh, she's doing it with, um, oh my God, learncalligraphy.com with Kestrel uh, in Camitas. Yeah. And I believe it starts in two weeks. 
Yeah, I'd have to double check. I've never had the pleasure of, uh... yeah, ink me this. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, I've never had the pleasure of actually speaking to her directly, but I'm like, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about her. Like all the classes that I've taken, it's actually a bit crazy. Cause like I have a filing cabinet I have one of the big ones from Ikea and it's like full of all of the notes that I've taken through the classes. Like I've taken more classes in the past 12 months than I did in the previous three years combined. <laughs> oh, Heather held. I've also heard nothing but good things about her classes too. I just, again, it's one of those ones I'm like, I'll get there eventually at some point. The timing will work and I will be able to take a class with Heather. Just had a bit of a brain. I'm like, how do I, how would I do a letter, a number four? Yeah, okay. I like that. That works. I got. I just actually got a, a nice card from uh, Cecilia Bashi, because I had sent her a Christmas card, and she was doing a Heather Health class. And she sent me a card in the mail I just got yesterday with my name on it with like in like the Heather Held style. Oh my god. I did not meet her at rendezvous. I didn't. I was so sad. I didn't get a chance to meet her. I get I've never I've not heard anything but good things about her though. But I didn't get to meet her there. It makes me sad. Maybe if I can afford to go to the calligraphy conference next year. We'll see. I have to look at my finances if all of these classes I'm taking online, you know, don't break my bank account. <laughs> Maybe I can afford to go to California next year. <laughs> I like how you're so confident, Marco, that I'm going to be like, I'm definitely going. We'll see, because like it's gonna be, uh, excuse the swearing, uh, patience, but bloody expensive. Yeah, I my last uh, like my last class that I'm going to be taking is is uh, is uh, Shins Madras, and then I'm going to stop because I it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot. But yeah, like with the. Um, with the conversion come from going to the states oof woof i'm like i have a feeling it's going to be something like with flight and food and all that stuff i have a feeling it's going to be something like probably 5 grand and i'm like that's a lot of money plus next year i think i have two di like um weddings that i have to go to that are not local that I, I need to go. Yeah, it's very expensive. Cause, well, the thing is, like, to get there, the tickets themselves aren't that expensive, and then but once you're there, you don't pay for anything. Like, I'm thinking about the conversion, though, of, like, once you pay for flight in American, plus then you pay for, like, staying there in the class and whatever. Yeah, and like I said, I had, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have two distance weddings that I have to go to next year, too, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope <laughs> and hope that I can go because one of the weddings is potentially in Vancouver which is kind of
kind of far, right? It only costs you 2500 or 3000 Canadian. Oh, that seems more interesting because that's what I was really worried about. I was like, I'm just going to double whatever price I think it's going to be. And like, you know. That might be more doable. Even with the flight. Yeah, like it's still it's still expensive. It's not five, <laughs> but yeah, it's still it's still expensive. It's still expensive. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like once I was in in uh, in California, after the thing was, what I was gonna do is I was just gonna go to Vegas and go meet my husband there and go hang out in Vegas for a few days. <laughs> Cause he's wanted he's wanted to go with me to Vegas for a while. Because he, he's had to go for work before. And he was like, it's so much fun. You Like, it's so fun. And I was like, I'm sure you're right. But um, I'd love to go. Flights are not that bad in advance. But yeah, that's it. That was also the other thing, too, of like, oh, I don't know if, like, things are going to be, like, open, right? Like, how is the vaccine gonna work out and like will we all have to be vaccinated before we go do we have to have a two-week quarantine at that point <laughs> until i go there there we go also by the way here's the basic strokes in group one through four that i've been going through for the past five weeks so here you go here it all is take a screenshot if you want but like i said like i said I, I, I noted it down for myself if anyone actually wants to take get a copy of this i'm going to put it in, in my in my new newly minted and actually paying attention to discord i'm going to do that well like even so actually uh marco like you were saying for flights and stuff uh i was supposed to go to disney this year that did not happen <laughs> oh you have to go uh Cool. Thanks for popping by. I appreciate the chit chatting. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Basic strokes. I'm done. All right. So now, yeah, we're, yeah, it's, it's fine. Marco, go. <laughs> I'll fill. I'll fill you in later. All right, double letters. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> we'll go next year, maybe. Also a problem if we go next year. <laughs> Bye. All right, double letters, double letters, double letters. Double. I do love using this nib, but sometimes it does stick on my paper. Oh, thanks, patience. Appreciate. Thanks for popping in. I'll be here probably for another hour or so, give or give or take. I appreciate the support. I'm like on a very curvy curve today. I think I may be reaching over too much.
letters. Okay, so double letters. So some double letters that are kind of obvious that people think of right away are like the double L, the double T, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I'll show you some ways that you can do that. That maybe won't drive you completely crazy. Um, so one of the double letters that can sometimes be a bit difficult to do are double L's uh, because it's kind of immediately clear when, uh, or the, the challenge with double letters period is that it's very clear if you're not doing them exactly the same because they're gonna be right next to each other or even like see the the A sender loop and the D and the L, like not great because you can tell immediately that they're different sizes. But maybe if I had made that little mistake over here, you wouldn't notice it so much. Do you know what I mean? So let's see if I can do two double L's or just a pair of L's uh, pretty, pretty evenly. Eh, I've done better. I'm gonna try that again. Oof, what is up with my hand today? There you go, those two are better. It's a quadruple L. <clears throat> so let's ignore these guys and just pay attention to these. So as you saw, actually, is it's pretty hard to do two the exact same ones next to each other. Uh, so something that I like to recommend is that you, if you know that you can't make them completely the same and that bothers you, uh, is to purposely make them different. So something like, you know, we're coming in and we're doing our ascender loop up here, but then, you know, maybe we're gonna just do it like this and we're gonna do the other L like this. And that makes it like a little bit of a flourish. So, What's a word with two L's? Mm, doll, doll house. Oh, that's like, oh, that may be too many A-centers in a room, in a row. Uh, two L's, word with two L's. Bully, let's go that one. So you could do something like that. You can also make this one, you can alternate them like this guy too. So. kind of do it like that too. Uh, normally I would have done that a little bit better where those lines actually connect a little bit easier. But um, the challenge with two hairlines is sometimes it's hard to show, like to connect them. But 
I think you get the idea. So there's that way. There we go. So also for an L, you can also come in with a flourish on the side and then do it like this. So it won't be as obvious if the spacing isn't as perfect, right? So let's see. You know, and sometimes you want those flourishes as well, because maybe you know you're feeling like there's a bit of it's a bit of empty space on the top. So doing a flourish like that might be interesting to fill up some of that space. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a way to cheat around not being able to necessarily do exactly the same spacing uh, in between. Again, only if that really bothers you too, because sometimes people just don't care because like calligraphy is meant to, it, mm -hmm. calligraphy is done by hand, it's not done by a computer. So sometimes having those like slight errors, quote unquote, uh, in your work shows that it's a person that did it and it's not a computer. So it, it just depends on what your goal is really. If you really want it to look like super professional, super perfect, super like immaculate, but it's really hard for you to do the two asynder loops being the same, like looking the same, sometimes the way to cheat around it is to kind of play with a bit of flourishing and making it on purpose that they're not, um, that they're not the same. So, um, so there's those two. Let's do uh, two Fs, because Fs uh, often come in, in a duo. So uh, this is where it helps to ha know more than one type of letter. So because I'll, I'll know that one, but I also know this guy. So what you can do is use both. So let's say you're work using the word different. So you can kind of do it like that. So your two Fs are different from each other. Um, there we go. And then you can do it the other way as well. So you'll have the f this guy, which then goes into the one that has the ascender and the descender loop. So you can do it like that versus trying to do them exactly the same on both. This one though is, it is a bit hard to just because you do have to have the ascender loops. Um, but I'm trying to think like you can probably do, you know, if we're going in from an I from different, you know, you can do one like this, you know, maybe, maybe if you want to do that way. So you have both of the same, but one has the flourish that goes into it first. So then, you know, it's gonna look different, but it's on purpose that it looks different. Um, or even, I'm trying to think of one where you can utilize the, the descender loop. Oops, that was very not on the correct angle. Yeah, you can do it like that too, I guess. Mm, it's a bit weird. Let's try another one. Well, you can do it like that maybe, yeah. You know, you can kind of switch them up a little bit. Yeah, 
that could work. That could work definitely. You can kind of do a similar thing too, like I did on the top with the two L's as well. Um, yeah, sorry, I was just thinking about which one would would have the over the top flourish there. down and then here again oh hello Mikey how's it going how are you today good I'm glad you're doing well today I'm glad I'm glad So you can do it kind of like this as well. I'm not sure how much I love this. Maybe it works. Maybe it works for something you're doing. Maybe you're, maybe we're going like this. So we're going very elaborate. Maybe something like that. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. I'm just going through how to um, work around double letters. <laughs> Double letters are difficult because they should look similar next to each other unless you don't want them to. So that's kind of what I'm going through right now. Uh, uh, so two Fs. Let's see. There would be one here maybe. We're going to go down and do... Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah, I like, kind of like that. That works too. This one isn't like a traditional, like the F I was showing you. However, when you read it within the full word, it totally looks like you can read that as two Fs. And then having sometimes a little bit of a fliff at the bottom can sometimes, depending on what your told text is, can sometimes like even out like where there's some white space or something like that as well. Uh, cool. All right, so we got some double P's. So again, kind of like the F, it's useful to know more than one type of way to do the same letter. So I'll show you the three um, basic variations of the letter P that I use most often. So you have th three different ones. So with those three, you can kind of mix and match. Um, so let's say we're doing the word happy. Um, yeah, because happy is a word that comes up kind of often. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy, happy day. Uh, and then, you know, I will sometimes just, I'll do a flourish under there. So I'm really not even trying to make them look exactly the same. I'm like really pushing it and be like, nah, I don't need it. Don't need it to look the same. Let's make it look super different. Um, like be really loose about it. So Mikey, what brings you to my stream today? Were you just like browsing and we're like, like what is she doing <laughs> with that paper and that weird looking pen? <laughs> You know, 
or you can not do flourishing and you can just do it like this and I just wrote over my paper because I'm looking at the screen and not at my paper where my pen is haha <laughs> Uh, but yeah, essentially, like you just kind of pick two that you like and you put them together. Again, this is like if you want them both to be the same type of letters next to each other, hats off to you. Go for it. Have at her. But again, sometimes you just want it to look a little different too. Maybe look a little bit more like different or uh, a bit more interesting or, you know, just like a. a bit of a visual like oh what's going on over here you could do it like that too totally cool uh let's see uh two b's let's do two b's sorry my if i don't have a i need to grab another clipboard from somewhere i'm just not sure where my other one is so i can keep my papers from like flying all over my desk by flying i mean slightly askew <laughs> <laughs> from my desk. Uh, all right, let's do two Bs. So we have that type of B. We have this type of B. And we have This type of B. So essentially, it's the same variations as the letter P. More, well, these two are, anyways. This one's a bit different. So um, let's do the word bubble and let's use all of them because I can. This particular B, I use the least just because, like, it's not always legible as a B, to be 100% honest. The other two are. Like, let's do it like this. Let's go. Oops. There are a lot of ascenders in this word, and I'm not touching the baseline on oh, those last two. I think I got surprised. I was like, oh, right, there's a lot of ascenders here, and then I just lost concentration and didn't touch my baseline. So let's do that again. A bit better slightly improved love a slightly improved <laughs> this one's a bit weird it kind of curls in but you see what I mean like I've did I've used all three my variations and it's maybe not as noticeable that like they're not perfect but um, something that I had mentioned in uh, my stream on Monday I think or maybe last week was a little trick uh, to see if or like to check if your words are evenly spaced uh, like at least visually which is uh, checking to see if ovals fit there let's see how dry are you yet you're not dry yet all right I'll use this one then so like let's say we're doing there should be an oval in this space it should be the same shape oval here. It should be here. It's not. This one's too wide. And then in between, they should be the same. Whatever the width of that oval is. And this is this is too wide. And then this is too narrow. So this is just like a, a visual cue. Or you can do these. And because wherever you touch the baseline that should be all the same space around. So you can see here, this one's not. This one's not very well spaced. This one should be better. 
let's see, visually. Much better. Uh, the one thing with this one is because there's that little shpoop up here, it's not a, it's a, looks a little bit wide when you're looking at the bottom, but visually it's still pretty even because we have a little bit of a dark space right here. So let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see a bit better. But in between this, like where the lines touch the baseline, uh, where the calligraphy touches the baseline, and or doing like, is this oval the same size as visually as these ovals that are in here? Like this one is a bit too, even though they touch here, this is too close. And that's because it ended up curving, which is why it touches here properly, but it's here, it's too big. It's because this should have been straight down. Should have been like this. And then we're having an oval, we're having another oval, we're having an oval, and we're having an oval. So just as a thing for, uh, this is for, For consistency. Oh, I'm just gonna turn on my other light. Yeah, that's a bit better. Maybe I'll open up my blind. Nope. Uh, a little bit more light's always nice. There we go. We're good. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So bubble consistency is for here. Uh, oh yeah, and then my last one, unless someone thinks of one that I'm not thinking of right now, is two Gs together. So for this one, I don't really have two different um, variations of the letter G, but what you do have and what you can play with is, because you have two descenders, is that you can flourish one and not flourish another if you want to do that. So goggle, lots of G's in that one. How do I want to flourish this? Let me. How might how might how will I how do I want to do this? All right. Let's try that again. So yeah, you can kind of do it like that. So you have these two are the same more or less, and then you have this one just kind of flourished just lightly, a little bit. And then you have your L because there's like three D senders here and you have just one A center. So you can pull it out a little bit with adding one of these and you have the word goggle instead of having them all like completely the same and very regimented. But yeah, like, I guess, I guess the thing that I would like for you to take away from this is that if it's not exactly the same, it's fine. And I think that that's kind of what, when I was on my little like soapbox and spiel at the beginning of my stream, was that that whole like Bob Ross of calligraphy of like, I don't want people to be intimidated by, by calligraphy at all. Um, and the reason why I say this is because when I started, and I know that some of my students have had this problem too, or this challenge, or this like kind of roadblock. I, I, roadblock, I think is kind of more the thing I wanna say, is um, a lot of the people who are attracted to doing this type of calligraphy with a pointed pen 
want things to be really beautiful and very perfect. So when you're learning how to do something, um, it's frustrating to not be able to do that perfection that you see on Instagram or in, on YouTube or on TikTok or whatever right away. So, cause you hold yourself to such a high, high level of like, well, I'm, I really want this to look pretty and I want to make it look as beautiful as I see. And I don't understand why my hand isn't doing the thing the way it should be. Um, and then it, it's really, it can get really discouraging. Um, I remember when I, when I first started learning, uh, in an actual class, I was, I think it was the third class in which I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't make the pen move properly. I couldn't make the, the shapes that I wanted to do. And like, to give some context too, I'm not an artist by any stretch in that way that you would maybe think of like, oh, she like draws and sketches, but I, I've taken some classes and I've always drawn. I'm, I was always able at least to like, I might not always be able to come up with things off the bat in my head and reproduce what's here and put on the paper, but I can usually look at something and then reproduce it. I, well, not from here, but if like I have a reference photo or something or a reference of like, or I can follow along with the teacher and I'm like, oh, okay, like this is fine. And when I wasn't able to do that in my class, it was so hard for me to like enjoy what I was doing. Cause I was like, why isn't it perfect? Why can't I make it look like the teacher? And like, why can't I do that? And I put a lot of pressure on myself and I've gotten that feedback from students who are writing to me and asking me like, oh my God, like it's not good. It's not, it doesn't look the same as yours. It doesn't look um, the perfect way I want it to. And it's, it's something that like, it, 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 it's sad a little bit. Cause I'm like, it's fine. You're just learning now. But I also understand that feeling. Cause I did the same thing when I was, uh, when I was also just learning. So I think the thing that I want to push forward with people is that as long as you're trying your best, it's fine um, and it's good enough and it's okay. And you should just practice more. Like that's it. Like it doesn't, it, th things like this, because it's so very precise, it doesn't come overnight. <laughs> there is a pretty high learning curve for understanding how the pen and the tools work. But making it work in a consistent way, like I'm still making mistakes now and I've been doing calligraphy for five years. Like, you know, and, and um, Suze Cunningham, who I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, like she's been doing it for, I don't even know how long. And like her work is perfect, but she's also been doing it probably four times longer than I've been, than, than I have been. And she's also probably been doing it longer than I've been alive. So it's, it really is one of those things that like, I want to make sure people understand that like, as long as you're enjoying the process of kind of practicing and thinking that it's like a fun thing to do and you're enjoying it. I think like, you know, pushing forward and just kind of doing it anyways, regardless of like, you know, does it compare to the Instagram feed of like the people I follow? Uh, it doesn't matter. It, you should only be kind of comparing to yourself. That got kind of a little bit philosophical. I'm surprised that came out just, you know, I think semi-sensical, which is nice. I always appreciate a semi-sensical sentence coming out of my mouth. That was also a lot of S's. It's fine. Um, but yeah, anyways, it's just something that I, um, I'm i kind of very passionate about of making making this accessible to people. And, and like, it's fine if you make mistakes and it's fine if it's not perfect and it's fine if you're just learning and it's fine if you're not just learning. Maybe you're just like, maybe you're doing it for 35 years and you're just like, I'm not that great. I'm like, that's okay. You can still do it. <laughs> no, it's gonna be like, who's, who on Instagram is like gonna be zooming in on your work, going like, this is shit, like meh, like unhappy people. <laughs> unhappy people do this. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I think I'm done now, maybe, we'll see. We'll see if I go on another tangent. Uh, all right, cool. Now, uh, the last thing I want you to do today was numbers. Uh, I will not lie, I am not the best at doing numbers, okay? Like it's, it's, it, I don't do a ton of addressing and I especially not right now because of COVID. Uh, so I, and in Canada, because that's where I am based, uh, our, our zip code, our, our postal code is not purely numbers, it's numbers and letters. So like people who do a lot of um, addressing in the States do numbers way more than I do, period. So it's like way more practiced at it. Anyways, so like I, like my spiel before of like, I'm not perfect at it, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna show you guys like at least uh, the basis of it. And then like, 
go look at people who are perfect at it and then like try to emulate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll put my page, I'll explain here. I'll put my little, my little title. I always find too the majuscule N and M. I'm like never a humongous fan of what the, whatever they look like, but there we go. Numbers. It always feels like weird. Maybe it should have like a little thing here. I also think this is too tight. Anyways, it's fine. All right, so we got our our number. Let me look at this here, so it doesn't move around so much. Ta da! All right. So our number one. We're starting with an entry stroke over here. We're going up, and we're kind of going up to where our minuscule t would start but instead of like uh crossing like and pressing like full full weight here we're going up and then we're starting very thin and then bringing it back down let me let me try and zoom in on that a little bit easier so you see what my pen is doing so we're going up we're pressing lightly and then i'm pressing and it ends on the thickest part here. So that would be the number one. Um, and then for the number two, uh, I do it in two strokes. Uh, so we're gonna see if I can do this today. Again, I'm not very practiced at numbers, but we're gonna, we're gonna try together, okay? So I'm gonna start here, right here. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna press and I'm gonna put the weight right here, right in the center of my X height. Oh, sorry, let me. I had done that too low. So right in the center of my X height, and then I'm gonna go up and do like a little mini compound curve. Oops, sorry. So yeah, it's like a mini compound curve. But then I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna add some weight here. So you have to kind of do this one in two strokes. Um, so yeah, we're coming from uh, the, like touching the, the waistline, coming up a little bit, down, up, and then I'm coming back over and then I'm adding a bit of weight there. That's kind of how I do my twos. So the number three, we're also doing something similar. So we're starting from the same place as the two, which means we're starting from just on top of that waistline we're coming up, but instead of uh, going right down to uh, the descender line, we're kind of stopping midway through here, through like in the X height. We're coming back over, pressing, and then going back up, and I just come back a little bit, just give it a little dot, and I come back over here, and I add some weight on this side. The first one I did was better. I did, was able to do it kind of more in, in one fell swoop versus like uh, talking and doing it at the same time, which is always, I find a little bit difficult. Who decided that I need to stream and teach at the same time? Oh yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, cool. So then we have our number four. So the four, it's kind of, it's kind of like, almost like a line of universal beauty. We're kind of doing a swell in the middle uh, I'm starting a little bit, mm, I want to say a third above my waistline. 
and I'm kind of going out. I'm not following that 55. I'm actually not sure what angle that would be, but we're going out, we're over at about midway between the baseline and the descender. We're crossing, and then I'm essentially doing a number one right here. So you can kind of exaggerate this too if you want. And just kind of do it this way. Oh, wow. Hello, a raid. How's it going, guys? <laughs> 17. What's up? <laughs> hey, just doing some numbers with calligraphy. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. I hope I hope you I hope you like it. Th thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do, but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, cool. A lot more eyes than I'm used to. What's up? I'm very, I'm very happy with right now. That's good. Thanks, guys. Yay. Oh, I got a follow. I got a follow. Yay. That's so kind. Thank you. I'm almost at 50. 30. 36 eyes. Oh, God. Too many. Too many eyes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to get back to what I was doing. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Unless you guys have questions for me. That's also, that's also awesome. I, you can also ask me questions. That's cool. I'll just be explaining how to do a number five. That's fun. Uh, cool. Yeah. So number five. So we're going to go here right above the waistline. I'm going to press a little bit, kind of come back around. And then we're just going to do a little, little, a little hat right there. 36 eyes. So many eyes. I don't think I've ever had that many concurrent viewers. <laughs> Thank you, Mikey. What were you doing? What were you streaming? What were you doing on your end that you're coming with me, with coming to me with so many people? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The number five is kind of kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm glad that it came out clean, especially in stream with this many eyes watching. Penny stock day trading. Oh, interesting. Cool. How did it go? Well. I have a very vague understanding of how that works. Like, very vague. The whole Robin Hood thing on the news. And I was like, cool, this is a thing. Awesome. But, like, other than that, no idea. <laughs> no complaints? Nice. Congrats. I appreciate it. That's good. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, here, I'll just go through my number six, what I just did there. I'm also very proud of that number six, especially with 18 viewers. Yes, awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're starting right here. We're doing a little like loopy loop, little 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 McDonald's arch. We're coming around here. We're gonna press along that 55, and then I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna come back over here, come back up to my waistline, and then press down here. So it looks like right here is a perfect little oval. And then I'm just come back in a little dot, a little weight. We got a little six. Then we're gonna do our number seven. Lucky seven? Lucky seven for penny stocks, maybe? No? Wrong, wrong thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool. So we're essentially gonna do a, oops. Kind of a long downstroke that kind of ends in a point and then we're gonna, whoops. Sorry, my pen got stuck. Seven and three are your lucky numbers. Per okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna try and make the seven look less like a knife that's about to stab someone. So we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. Actually, just a second, I forgot to flip my paper. I'll do it like this and I'll start right from the top from the crossbar and I'll come down like that instead of starting with the downstroke because I think sometimes I can get a little finicky obviously as we can see because I wasn't doing it super well then we're going to do our number eight which is coming from here down up and over so we're starting from that little like McDonald's arch we're pressing 
the rate going over. So this line is kind of more in the 55 than this one is, obviously, but it kind of looked visually, kind of looks like it's correct, right? This whole thing looks like it's on the 55 when you're looking at it this way, which is great. By the way, just for people who are just tuning in, let me unzoom me here. I'll just do a little quick rundown on like the lines that are on the paper if anyone is curious. So, and give a little a little uh, quick explanation because I just realized I'm like probably most of you have never heard, well, you've heard of Collier Freight but never actually done it. So let me, let me show you. This is a guide sheet because when one is learning how to do calligraphy or doing calligraphy, generally speaking, one should always use a guide sheet, okay? The reason why is because these proportions for copper plate, which is this the script that I'm doing right now, the reason why things look nice when they're in copper plate is because of uh, the proportions, or in calligraphy generally is because of proportions. The proportions are made when you're following a guide sheet, something like this. So um, the spaces here have specific names. This is an ascender line, this is a waistline. This is a baseline and this is a descender line, okay? The space between here and here is the ascender space. This is called the X height. If anyone does fonts and stuff, you'll probably, you'll know, or like graphic design, like that, all of these terms are very, they're there too. And then this is the descender space right here. So when, when working, if I'm talking about a baseline or something like that, I'm talking about this guy, the one that's slightly thicker, cool. Uh, what else? Uh, there's a proportion between how high these, the ascender and then the descender spaces depends on how high your X height is. So this one in particular is six millimeters. This is nine millimeters because whatever your X height is, it will inform what your ascender and your descender space are. And so if my uh, X height here is six millimeters, you times by 1.5, then your A center space and your D center space. That is what this is. So this is nine millimeters, six millimeters, and nine millimeters. Cool. Because I was just like, oh yeah, no, probably you guys like have no idea <laughs> like what the stuff is. But um, yeah, I've been going through, if anyone's been curious, uh, for the past, this is week five, five, six. Week six? Week six, I think. Yeah, no, it's week six. Uh, I've been go coming on every Thursday at 3.30 and I've been doing some teaching uh, on copper plate calligraphy, how to do it. So you can come and follow along with me. Um, yeah, I've just been kind of teaching it, going through. It's what I do for my job, it's what I do full time. But with COVID, you know, not a lot of people are getting married right now. Not a lot of people are asking me to come in and doing live calligraphy for their stores. You know why? Because there's everything's closed. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I figured I'd come on and try and teach people. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what you guys rated into. If you have any questions, by the way, as well, like feel free, like drop them in the chat. I'm, I'm open. You can always ask. Um, all right. So two more numbers and then we're good. So. Whoop. Zoom that back in. Uh, yeah. So this is a number nine. So the number nine, we're starting within that X height that I just very quickly explained what this was. So up here, we're going down here and then we're coming back from here and we're going below Oops, that one was horrible. The first one was better. I'm just going to point at this one instead. We're going to ignore here. Um, so we're going to come down and then dot it here, kind of like if it was a G. Uh, and this is one of the only ones that I do that is below the X height, uh, below that baseline. The seven does too, sometimes, but mostly not. And then we're going to do our zero, which is essentially an oval. Uh, so there we go. That's the zero. So here are all my numbers. And 
and I, I, if I, if I upload this one into my Discord, uh, I'll redo it because it kind of got a little messy. Because when I got overwhelmed with raid, I was like, oh my god, I can't do it. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, if I upload this one to my Discord, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll redo this page just so it's a little bit more clear, a little bit less messy pants. And then I'll add. So I'm definitely going to put this devil letters one on there for sure. And da, 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 da. my other ones too that had all of my. Where did I put it now? My desk is all papers all over the place right now. Where did I put it? Anyways, I went through all of the letters of the alphabet. Actually, I'll just do it now. I'll just do it now. And then I'll just add it to my Discord. And I'll use this other. So this is the one, if you go into my Discord, this is the one that I've uploaded in my files. And um, you can download it yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's the portrait mode one. So because I'm in Canada, in Canada, I don't know if you can hear my accent, Canada. Um, the, I, I work with like eight and a half by 11s. So I don't have it in like, oh, is it uh, like 4A? I don't remember if anyone's in the UK, if anyone wants to do that, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll try and figure out how to do that on my end. So I'll do, I'll just do A to Z. And then uh, the numbers in the bottom. And I always like to try and remember to title my pages. go all right so we won't do it in letter in letter groups I'll just go through like the normal order uh, and if there's any variations on the letters I'll just uh, I'll do them right one right after the other triple B. So uh, yeah, while I'm doing this, actually, I'll tell you about what I've been watching on uh, delightful Disney Plus right now. So uh, because I'm in Canada, what happened was last week or the week before, all of a sudden we got like more stuff to like watch uh, instead of just the Disney just the Disney stuff, which is great. Uh, so I have been binging Bones. Oh my God, I have forgotten how good that show was. Um, Cause I was a bit young when it was on TV. Uh, and I had, I was a teenager. I had better things to do than sit home on whatever day it was uh, on, on uh, television. And, um, I forgot how delightful Bones and um, David Boreanaz are. I used to have the biggest crush on David Boreanaz. Like Buffy, hi, Angel, biggest cr like crush ever. So I think in like three days, I've gone all the way through season one, I'm halfway through season two already. And I'm like, I don't remember any of these episodes. Like, I know I used to watch it, but I, I don't remember like almost any of them. 
but it's been so delightful because like you know I'm sure I'm not the only one but I'm like I'm starting to run out of things on Netflix to watch and I don't have cable like I don't have regular cable like uh, me and my husband are, are big we're cord cutters um, for a few years now so like in the place where I live now we've never had like actual cable we've only ever had internet um, so yeah like having content to watch that's new and has been updated has been delightful and there's like so many fun uh, movies and stuff that are on there now too which is great I think my next thing to go after Bones might be maybe maybe I'll go back and watch Buffy I don't know how well it's gonna work now <laughs> I also don't know if Angel got added. But like I've, I've been to Comic-Con a, a, a fair few times when it comes to Montreal. And uh, I always see the guy who plays Spike. He always shows up. He's so funny. I've heard him talk a couple of times. And then before the uh, my current binging of Bones, uh, I was I was rewatching Stargate, a ten season of Stargate. Again, another show. I was I remember watching it when I was younger, but I was like I, I think that came out in like ninety nine, and I was really young in ninety nine. I was like uh, well, really young. I was how old was I? I was like eleven. Uh, so. I was 11 years old in 99. So I like I would watch it, but I didn't really catch all of the things. I was just like, mm, cool, going to other worlds and killing aliens. Woohoo. Uh, watching it now, I'm just like, oh my god, this is like so much deeper <laughs> than I thought it was. So I finally finished that as well, which is also why my current obsession with watching um, which wa with watching Bones is there too. Because I'm like, I don't want to watch the news. It's like the depressing these days. Um, you know, I'd rather just be cute, cute. I just want to watch the stuff that's fun, where people, like, you know, you know that they're safe, you know they're going to live. We're not having some Game of Thrones crazy stuff where, like, someone's going to die, like, the main character's going to die. Like, I know what they're not. I know they're safe. They're fine. I don't have to worry about it. I can just watch and enjoy their adventures. It's so good. Plus, I, I was discussing with my husband, too, like, if Stargate was done now, I think Daniel Jackson would probably be the leader. Like, I don't think it would be, like, the military guy. I think it would be, like, the... Or it would be Sam. It would be the woman. Like, just for the way that, like, TV is written now. I, like, I would be really curious to see if, like, if they were to redo the whole show, like what the differences would be. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the, that Jack O'Neill wouldn't be the head of it anymore, <clears throat> but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. we go we got our whole minuscule alphabet yay and then i'll do one through nine zero we're gonna keep our fingers crossed i don't completely mess it up
I did it. It's very exciting. I did it. Ah, fun. All right, cool. So from here, I'm going to end my stream. Next Thursday, I will be teaching again at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I will be doing, uh, starting uh, majuscules. So capital letters, pardon me. Yeah, I'm gonna be starting capital letters next week. So uh, those ones are not in like letter group form the way that I've been doing minuscules, but uh, we'll be going A through Z, it'll be fun. Uh, I won't do all of them in one stream though, because uh, the rules are slightly different than the minuscule stuff. So yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, start that next Thursday. Oh, thank you for coming by. That's so sweet. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, I mean, check out other art channels. Like everyone's really chill. Everyone's really fun. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I'm also back on Mondays in which I stream whatever I want uh, when it comes to calligraphy. I don't really have, like, I'm not teaching. It's just more of a, maybe I'm writing on my, maybe I'm engraving or something. Like, who knows? So, yeah, I appreciate everyone coming by. Thanks for guys who stuck around. I super appreciate it. I've not had this many concurrent viewers before. So thank you so much. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for staying. Thanks for um, following me if you did. I super appreciate it. And yeah, I'll be back on Monday and Thursday next week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. So bye, guys. Have a great rest of your day.